you'll see black or orange specks in your paint. But I don't even think people know that that's on there. So wild. You do not even want to know what gets stuck into your paint just from normal driving, okay? Oftentimes you need to do an iron decontamination on your vehicle and that's using a product like our iron remover, okay? Now, the process is pretty simple and it's tethered on to the washing process. Now, iron decon, iron fallout, what the heck is that? Well, you get iron particles that get embedded into your paint. That's just from normal driving, okay? Whether you drive next to the railroad, which has rail dust coming off of it all the time, or you drive in snow, harsh weather, you'll get metallic brake dust that actually embeds itself into the paint, meaning it's not sitting on top, it's actually, it's like shrapnel going into the surface. So those are the types of things that you can't remove by just washing your car, okay? They have to be removed either chemically with a thioglycolate based spray product, which is iron remover, or mechanically with a clay bar or clay mitt. Now, I will say this, iron remover is a unique product, okay? I think often people say, why can't I just spray wheel cleaner onto my car? You can, but the thing about wheel cleaner is it's a gel-like formula. So when it comes out of the sprayer, it comes as a thick, small spot, and you'd have to use a ton of wheel cleaner all over the whole car. Iron remover is a thin product, so when you spray it, it atomizes like that, and it gives more coverage on the vehicle, and actually, it doesn't run off as bad. So this hangs, it dwells, and it does more of the heavy lifting, especially when you're doing a iron remover on paint and side panels. What I'm gonna do right now is do an iron decontamination, and you'll see this whole thing's gonna turn purple as a thioglycolate inside iron remover reacts with the iron fallout all over this car. So in this process, what I don't wanna do is just start blasting the whole car down with iron remover. There's actually a specific process to this. And what I've done so far is I've washed the car, okay? I took the mitt to it, everything's washed. You can see there's still suds on here. And the first thing I don't wanna do is go blast the whole car down with water because I don't have filtered water right now. So I run the risk of getting water spots instantly because it will bake in the, well today, the fog. but mainly the sun. So what I like to do is go section by section. So what I'll do is rinse off the back door here and get the suds off of the car to begin with. And you probably notice I had a drying towel in my hand, okay? So instead of taking iron remover and blasting it onto the water, which is gonna not only dilute the product, but also make it run down really fast, I will take my drying towel that I have. I'll quickly dry this really quick. I'll even do this section right here. Like so. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're not, this isn't the final dry, so don't get too caught up with it. And then we'll set the towel there, set my pressure washer down. I'm gonna need that here in a second, okay? Take the iron remover and you're gonna blast the paint down like this. Mainly the paint, you don't really need to do the glass because the iron, the iron will stick to it, but you, it's not gonna embed itself. And actually I have another tool I'm gonna use with this to address some of the other bonded contamination that's on here. So all the area that I dried, we take and we blast off with iron remover. Now, what you're gonna see when you're able to see this in camera is the iron particles that are embedded into the paint will start to react with the raw chemical that's in iron remover. It's called thioglycolate. It's the same exact raw chemical that we use inside of our wheel cleaner to attack metallic brake dust. But what happens, it reacts to the paint. It actually starts to turn purple or bright pink. And that is the iron remover, the thioglycolate melting away the iron particles that are embedded into the paint. Now, oftentimes you'll hear people do a clay bar or a clay mitt, something like this, okay? I like to actually pair it with an iron remover while I do this process. So I'm actually gonna be using Yams Polish's Visco Clay because I know I felt this paint's very bumpy, so I need to do a little bit more work with the Visco Clay rather than the clay mitt. And so I'm actually gonna use, while the iron remover is working on this, I'm gonna use the Visco clay 
and the iron remover adds the clay lubrication during this to also remove the bonding contamination. Now, I think a lot of times people will say, oh, I just need to iron remove my car, it removes all the bonding contamination. No, iron remover is for a very specific thing, and we talked about it already, the iron fallout that's embedded, but there's also paint overspray, road tar, tree sap that's also sitting on the top, which this does not remove. So, using the visco clay, I will go over the surface that I sprayed iron remover on to also remove the bonding contamination that's on this. And I'll even use it on the glass. And I'm using the iron remover more as a clay lubrication versus a iron fallout remover on the glass. But what I'm doing is sort of double dipping here. Not only am I removing the iron fallout, but I'm also removing the iron contamination that's embedded itself into the paint here. So what I like to do is I'll let the, I'll let the iron remover start to do its thing a little bit. You can see all the purple happening here. And then I go with the visco clay right over the top of it. Then I'll spray the iron remover one more time, let it do its thing again, rinse it off, dry it, and then I move on to the next section. Okay, so now with the iron remover, what you don't wanna do is let this sit on here for an extended period of time, okay? You don't want it to fully dry on there. So today is a little cloud cover, so it's not as bad, but if you're doing this in the direct sunlight, I recommend starting in the shaded side first. Make sure you dry it after you're done doing this process and then move to each section. So after I sprayed this on here, I did the clay portion of it. I'll spray it off. Now, you'll notice that I have not rinsed the whole car still, okay? I'm just working in this section. Now, I'm gonna take my towel again, do a quick once over with the towel. Set it down, do another round of this, okay? So, iron remover. The thing about it is the clay is gonna help the iron remover is gonna help too, but you don't know how much contamination is in here. Now, I will say this, if your car has been neglected, you've never done this and you're at you know 25,000 miles, 50,000 miles, or maybe you bought a used car, right? Doing this, it might take you a little bit of extra time, but I imagine that after your first round in your clay, you won't see as much of the purple. And what you wanna get to is essentially Spray it on, clay it, rinse it off, spray it again, and there's no more purple reaction because at that point, you removed all the iron fallout. Now, I will say this, iron fallout is very noticeable on light colored vehicles, okay? Oftentimes, if you look at the back of your car, you'll see black or orange specks in your paint, and that's essentially that embedded iron fallout that if it's orange, it means it started to rust. Okay, so if you have a light, like let's say you have a white color car, you have a silver color car, and you see a bunch of those specs, iron remover is a must. Okay, so in your reality of that, that type of color, this is something that you're want, gonna wanna do consistently. And when I say consistently, I'd probably say every fourth wash. You know, it's a pretty simple process that you do. Uh, so it doesn't take all that long, but it keeps it looking amazing. It will keep your paint looking great. And again, in the world of car care, what you wanna be doing is caring for your car as much as possible. So doing a regular maintenance of a clay bar and iron removing, especially on a white or light colored vehicle, it's sort of a must, okay? You wanna always take pride in your investment, take pride in your vehicle. And doing these steps, I mean, it's so simple, you know, you might as well do it anyways. Now, on my second go round of using the iron remover on here, you can see it's not as intense of purple. There's just a few little specks left. So that means I'm doing a lot of work here. So what I'll do is I let the iron remover dwell again. I'll give it one quick spray and I'll hit it with the clay bar one more time. And I imagine that the next time I rinse it off, if I sprayed iron remover on here, it probably wouldn't turn purple, okay? Just the fact of doing one round of iron remover with the clay bar does a lot of the heavy lifting. So if this is something that you do regularly, 
you might not need to do multiple rounds of the iron mover and clay treatment. You could do it one time and move on. All right, so I did these two sections. Now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rinse this off, dry it, and then I'll move on to my next section, eventually finishing the car, and I'll be ready to go.